Oh. You guys can't open it? No, we are. No. We're asking you. What money came from the store? Just the hundreds. Just the hundreds, not the tens inside no. you? On June 6, 2023, officers from Broward County responded to a call where a Walmart cashier was accused of stealing thousands of dollars from her register. Initially, the scheme involved the cashier shortchanging customers when given large bills, netting her $200 to $300 daily. Eventually, the cashier advanced her theft skills, leading to her stealing between $500 and $1,000 each day. The woman was taken safely to the police station and charged with a major felony, grand theft of more than $10,000. We've added an extra clip. Wait until you hear the reason why she was stealing from her job. We'll call this chapter Confessions of a Not-So-Smart Thief. What happened over there? Why'd you leave? Isn't that one closer to your house? It is, but I left because I left my parents' house. I wasn't living down in Pompano anymore. Where are you living now? I was living in Florida. Florida? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Miami. And Miami? You... It was just like on your own or with your friends? With friends. Okay. You seem like you're disappointed. Very. <laughs> yeah? How long did you know him? Who? Your boyfriend. Oh. We've been together for like a year and some months. <sighs> Maybe two years. December. Okay, so you guys are still together? Yeah. Why? Oh, oh. It's complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like it's complicated. It looks like you got it all figured out. Mm, it's complicated. Yeah? Is he messing around? Or he's got you in a trick bag? I can't say messing around because he believes in having multiple wives. I'm just not part of that. What is he, Mormon? He believes in... Or he's Muslim? The Most High. The he, Muslim? He's not Muslim. But he believes in like what? Yahweh B'Shem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Oh, so he's uh, Jewish? Yeah, he's one of them... Um, Israelite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but hey, he must be doing something right. Right? No, I ended things like, what, a couple days ago? A couple days ago? Yeah. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone which do teach and rule well through the Holy Spirit. I also want to say salutations, peace, blessings unto the households of you hopeful elect brothers and sisters that are fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. It is technically January 1st, 2024, 1217 AM. The Apostle Tahar just deemed this year through the Holy Spirit, the year of, uh, what was it? The year of... Um, Hastening of Jacob's trouble. All right, matter of fact, let me let me double check that really quick to be on the safe side. It's still fresh. It's still very fresh, but I believe the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, excuse me. And so it's 2024 and Apostle Tahar just deemed this year through the Holy Spirit, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. All right. And what I want to do is um, I want to go into this quick lesson of a video a few brothers have sent around and I'm going to title it. Confessions of a not-so-smart thief. Confessions of a not-so-smart thief. And again, what spurred me to do this lesson is watching this, what a few brothers have sent on a few chats that I'm on. And as you all saw in here in the introduction clip, it's this um, girl, this, this young lady out there in Florida. And she ended up getting busted. She's a Walmart employee, all right? She, you know, works at the cash registers. And she got busted for stealing over $10,000 from Walmart cash registers. You know, so as you heard it and seen it for yourself, when she got caught, you had the cop ask her a few things about herself. And, you know, you seen it was a root of bitterness that was there because um, she obviously was with a, a brother that believes. And you even heard her made mention the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. She asked what her boyfriend does. And she was a little hesitant and neglected. 
at first to give the details, but she said that he believes in the Most High, which is an indicator right there to show forth that he's an Israelite because ain't too many so-called Christians calling on the Most High. There ain't no Muslims nor anybody else that really mentions the Most High except for if you're an Israelite, all right? And um, also, too, you know, you've seen, again, I, I mentioned that bitterness that was there because she made mention that in his belief system, right after she said the most high, you can have multiple wives, which again is another indicator that her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend at the time, believes in the truth. Now, I doubt that this is any brother that we know or any brother in the camp's woman. You know, if it is, say hey, that brother knows and he's going to handle it how he handles it, whatever. You know, that's not what I'm going into now. I mean, frankly, we're the only ones that do use your Hawa Bashim, your Hawa Shai. Well, I don't want to say the only ones. You got a few groups that are out there that do mention it, but we're the main ones that do push the names. So I'm thinking maybe it's an affiliate camp. Maybe it might be Sakari out there. Who knows? Whatever. All right. But the fact that she was in the hot seat and he was asking those questions and she immediately went into the brother's belief when she was in a situation of being questioned by the police and such, you know, watching this video had me thinking about how it's gonna be when Jacob's trouble does come. When these people come to our family members and our relatives and ask us about a few things, especially if it puts a negative light on that family member or if it aids getting them out of a situation. And when I say family member, it could be a family member or, um, or a, a significant other or whatever. All right. But we know and we teach and the scriptures goes into it that there's going to be people that are going to be among your households that are going to sell you out. And he saw how quick that she was. She threw it out there. He had nothing to do with the situation. Again, I believe it came from a bitterness because the first one of the first things she mentioned about the belief is the fact that you can have multiple wives, which, according to the scriptures, it is sound. All right. Now, at the same time, too, we know we're in captivity. And we also do push that it's not wise here in Babylon to have multiple wives. But at the end of the day, what you decide to do with your maid ain't my business or is it nobody's business. All we can do through the Holy Spirit is give advice. All right. But in the same breath, knowing that it is lawfully, it is lawful to have multiple wives. There's so-called sisters that are out there that they, they, they just cringe at hearing that. They cringe at hearing you can have multiple wives. And these, you know, they cringe at it. And I believe certain of those sisters that cringe at that are going to, that's going to be one of the main factors in why they're going to be willing to sell the brother that they're out. They're going to sell him out immediately just by that multiple wives thing. And I'm speaking as a man, you know, I'm speaking as a man, but I definitely believe that to be one of the leading catalysts on women selling brothers out. All right. And again, I'm speaking as a man. But the scripture says this here in the book of Micah, chapter seven, verse five. And I don't intend on making this lesson long. We just got done fellowship and we had our New Year's Eve of destruction a few hours ago. But the spirit on me was just to uh, talk about this for, um, briefly. But you read this in Micah, chapter seven, verse five. And it says, trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. And who is the her that lieth in thy bosom? What is that talking about? It's talking about your woman. It's talking about your woman, man. And I know a lot of brothers obviously were, were men, first and foremost, of course, that. And being men, you know, obviously, you know, we love hard. We love hard and being Israelites and such, we know that there's, especially within our history, there's not really, uh, there's accounts, I'd rather say, of our forefathers spilling the beans, I'd rather say, to their woman, all right, or just um, loving their woman too hard to the point where they start following and worshiping the God to that woman, or they start going off, or whatever the case is, whatever the case is. At the end of the day, the scripture says right here, it isn't the wisest thing to, um, to tell your woman everything, all right? Now, obviously, of course, two of you stay with your woman, and she's your woman, she's going to see your dirty draws. She's gonna, if you're around her all the time, she's gonna eventually probably find out what you believe, which makes sense also too, while the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7, all right, and this is loosely paraphrasing, 
but he goes into if you don't if you have the opportunity to not marry and have a woman then you best off doing that all right which granted you know whether you don't whether you have your woman or whether whether you have relatives and such at the end of the day these people are going to try to sell us out and not all of our family members not all of our mothers not all of our fathers not all of our siblings and not all of our significant others and we get that but we do know that we have not been in jacob's trouble yet and we do know that when people's bellies are full, they'll say a lot of things that they wouldn't do. But when things get tough and your integrity and your life and your comfortability is on the line and the way that they can get that comfort back is by selling you out. Best believe they're going to do that in a second. Just as this young woman was very willing to air this brother's information out right there to the cops even though he had nothing to do with the situation and i'm gonna say it again man hey look hey brother you know what i'm saying i don't know whatever you do is whatever you do you know what i'm saying but i just recommend you to change your taste in woman brother <laughs> you know like change your taste in woman because i guarantee you if she was willing to spill the beans to the cops like this she's been showing red flags from the get-go the fact that she's stealing money from walmart is a red flag within itself you know it's a red flag within itself and even before she was at walmart i'm pretty sure there was hella red flags given and i'm gonna keep it at that i'm not gonna harp too much man but this is why we say what we say about being mindful about the woman that we deal with all right especially from those that lie in our bosom which again is our woman because a lot of them will sell you out they'll put your information out there you'll get you caught up or worse they'll get your ass killed and again, we have examples within the scriptures of some of those scenarios taking place, just as you all see in the visual in the introduction to this lesson. Now, let's go back to this here in Micah chapter 7, verse 5. It says, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. And again, that's talking about your wife, your woman. Even the NLT tells you that. Don't trust anyone, not your best friend, nor even your wife. And why is that? Because they will sell you out. They'll sell you out. If, if it's their comfort, if it's their freedom that's on the line, and the only way to get that freedom and comfort back is by telling these people about you and what you do and how you're a menace, a so-called menace to society and this, that, and the third, they're going to sell you out quick. And it's going to be the spirit, a spirit, I'd rather say, that's going to be put on them to sell you out because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. Now, this is Micah 7 and 6. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rise up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And this is it. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. And just because it says men doesn't mean it's only talking about men, because clearly it says the daughter-in-law and the mother. And just because it doesn't say wife or significant other right now, right there in verse six, doesn't mean that they don't apply to them. That applies to everybody that you're close to in this world, I'd rather say, the people that you grew up seeing, the people that you so-called love, they will be willing to sell you out on that day. Case in point, as we've seen the example of this right now. And again, I'm going to say it again for a third time. I believe one of the leading factors that was going to cause a lot of women to sell their men out or put their men on the back burner is because deep down there's a bitterness of us having the ability to have multiple wives. All right. And I believe that's going to be a leading cause for a lot of the sisters, these women with the head wraps and, you know what I'm saying, and covered from head to toe and all the shadow arms. And I'm not talking about all y'all. I'm not talking about all y'all because we hope that we make it. I'm not putting it out there like we just got a clean slate and we're going to make it. At the end of the day, Lord willing, I make it. And Lord willing, those of you all that are sincere and that are listening, make it, you know, but I'm just calling a spade a spade. And I'm speaking off of my experience that, you know, there are women that are very bitter and bent out of shape over us being able to have multiple wives. You know, and the reason why I say that, and all of y'all know, all of y'all know, there's Israelites that are out there that are women that have their own pages. They have their own platforms and such. They'll say shalom and they'll try to justify of men having just one wife, you know, and it's like taboo to have multiple wives, even though the scriptures goes into that so again i keep saying it but hey it's the spirit of the lord that's in me to say it but i believe that's going to be a leading cause in a lot of women selling you brothers out 
It's because deep down they they gritting their teeth. They thinking you with a they thinking of you with another woman, and then they're thinking about how the scriptures goes into it, and they can't take it. It's gonna drive them mad. Okay, so that's why I said what I said, and that's why this scripture here says what it says in Micah the seventh chapter. And our Lord Yahweh Shai also he also repeated this when he read this in the book of Luke the twelfth chapter. And let's get it. Because he says, a man's foes and a man's enemies will be those even of his own household. All right. So we got to be completely aware on how we move, especially for you brothers that still stay with your parents, for you brothers that stay with your, um, you know, with your woman. You know, hey, even for you sisters that have an unbelieving husband, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, you deal with your husband. As the scriptures say, that's your business. But, you know, if you believe and he don't believe, continue to believe. But there's a chance that. He can sell you out, you know, I'm just saying, you know, just to be fair and just to be balanced with it, you know, not saying that for you to just leave. Absolutely not. And if you take if you if you hear that and take that and leave, then you tripping, you know, you being a demon. Now, let's read this here in the book of Luke, chapter 12. And I jump straight to the point here, because, again, we were warned about this. And again, it makes sense why the apostle Paul stated what he stated in 1 Corinthians 7, that for you brothers, you know, or just generally for all of us, you know, if you desire to have a wife, you know, you know, hey, it ain't nothing bad. It ain't unlawful, obviously. And the scriptures say be fruitful and multiply. But we got to understand the times that we are in and know the difficulties that does come with that. Because even the apostle uh, Paul said, it's going to be trouble in the flesh. All right. It's going to be trouble in the flesh. So this is Luke chapter 12. And let's jump straight to it in verse 49. And it says, I am come to send fire on the earth. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It says, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it already be kindled? Because it's already going to be stuff going on. It's already going to be shit happening. When Yahweh Shai comes and cracks those clouds with the angels, there's going to be a lot of turmoil and conflict on the earth. Verse 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with because Yahweh Shai had to come down. He had to stuff. He had to suffer by the hands of those wicked Israelites and those Jakes. All right. And he also has a job that he has to do. OK, just as you read it in Matthew, the third chapter, where it states where John the Baptist said, I baptize with water. But he who cometh after me, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. So there's a job Yahweh Shai has to do. And as Yahweh Shai is doing his job, there's spirits that are automatically getting stirred up. And that comes with this baptism. All right. Once you're converted into this knowledge and accept this knowledge and accept your role being a, a partaker within this heavenly calling, you know that there's spirits that get riled up. Satan gets activated and Satan get activated even amongst the people that we're around in our lives. Like I said, siblings, parents, significant others. And this is what happens when you're called into this ministry. Now, I'm assuming that, you know, the chick looked younger, obviously. You know, she worked at Walmart as a cashier, so she probably can't be no more than 21, maybe 22 years old. You know, so if she repents, she repents. That's one thing. And I'm assuming the brother that she's with is probably around the same age. You know, so whatever the case is. But just, you know, this here is an example and a warning. And a warning to all of you brothers that are out here that are hella thirsty to get a woman and such and teach a woman these things. And you're excited to learn about this truth. And when you want to teach her everything, yo, the scriptures say this. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand doeth. And again, we know that Yahweh Shai, as he comes and as he's present, really, amongst us, his spirit is here. Other spirits get active and they turned up. They turn up. And they do things that you would not expect them to do. OK, they do things that you would not expect them to do. And the reason why these people do that is, again, it's because it's the demons that's in them to do that because they are enemies of the cross. All right. Think about Judas, for an example. You think he really Judas as the man wanted to sell Yahweh Shai out. And that's a scary thing when you think about it, because he was with Yahweh Shai. He was one of the twelve. At a point of time, but that evil spirit came upon him. All right. And you can read about that account when that spike nard oil was poured on Yahweh Shai's feet. You know, and Judas wasn't feeling that, you know. So, hey, it's scary when you look at it. But I'm just using this here as an example that that was an evil spirit 
that hopped on Judas, uh, Iscariot to do that. And that was an evil spirit that will hop on your relatives, your friends, these people, your wife, that'll sell you out. And we got to pray and hope the Lord keeps us and abstains us from having conjured any evil spirits and such. And if you keep the main thing, the main thing, and you continue to do that continually, all right, and hasten the day and fear the Lord and repent, then you good, man. But let's get back to this here in Luke 12. This is Luke 12 and 59. In verse, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 12 and 51, excuse me. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. All right, so it's a reason why certain relatives don't fuck with you no more. It's a reason why your parents don't mess with you no more. And of course, this ain't for all of y'all that are out here. Of course, you know, hey, I still talk to my mother. You know what I'm saying? I love both of my parents. I don't, I, you know, I wish I had a better relationship with my father, but I know it's because of this truth which is why we don't talk no more. You know what I'm saying? Which is all good because we understand the bigger picture and what Yahweh Shai said right here. But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how am I straight until it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I'm come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division, which exactly what takes place, especially within you brothers' lives that believe. You experience and see that division firsthand. They start noticing your diet changes. They start noticing you're not... You're not um, saying Jesus and Christ no more. And these are for you brothers that came up being Christians. They notice that you don't go to church no more, you know, or they notice that you hanging around and you mention the brothers often, <laughs> you know, to the point where certain people that mention the brothers in a in a uh, bitter way. You know, you with the brothers again, you know, for those of you all that know, y'all know what I mean, you know. But again, that's that division. Now, this is verse 52, 52. For from henceforth, there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. All right. And I've never heard this scripture brought out in the Christian church. They teach a lot of so-called unification and unity and love everybody and no matter what it is. But the scriptures clearly tells you that the Lord is with division and he's always been with division. Even when we received the land of Canaan as an inheritance, what did he do? He, the Lord put those Canaanites out of the land, the bulk of them. All right, put some of them in captivity, slew a certain number of them, and so forth. All right, even in Israel, you have um, 11, well, you have divided parts. Levi having, of course, you know, their inheritance being uh, partakers of the uh, ceremonial duties. So they haven't been given a, a land in Israel because they was in the suburbs because they offered the sacrifice. Who were the priests? And then you had uh, other Levites that were not necessarily in the line of the priesthood, but they had ceremonial duties that they had to fulfill all right their inheritance was doing the service of the lord so they had their part as well but going to the point even the lord divided israel into numbered parts in each of those parts you had tribes that dwelt within those regions all right so as yahweh is coming back and the presence of the lord is being reestablished on the earth there's a lot of division taking place and this has to happen and this is what the lord is with all right and this is why it's wise for us to watch how we move, watch what we say, all right? Watch what we do around these people, especially from her that lieth in our bosom. When you with your woman and she smells good, you know what I'm saying? And you there and you're just comfortable with her and you just want to start pouring out your chest. It's not the best move. When I say pouring out your chest, I'm talking about, you know, just telling all, you know, spilling the beans. It's not the best move. We have an example with Samson and so forth, Okay. Even Zerubbabel talked about that in uh, First uh, Ezra, the fourth chapter. He talked about the lengths and the measures men will go just to please their woman. And we've seen brothers amongst us that fell out over women. So that woman demon, <laughs> that woman demon has a strong grasp on those whose spirits ain't strong. All right. And I'm not saying your spirit ain't strong. If you have a woman, of course, I'm not saying that. But if you constantly want to cater toward her and you worried about what she thinks about what you do and you're not going back home in time for whatever. Now, obviously, you get your household. If you got kids in a household, that's different. But I'm talking about for you younger brothers that are able bodied to still do what you got to do, do the work. And you don't have to have the burden of having a family on this side or whatever. Hell, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm preaching to the converter. What's understood don't got to be said. Shit. You know what I mean. I'm saying be wise on how you move and be prudent. All right. Hey, the scriptures say it because we are walking in the peril of our overthrowing. Matter of fact, I can end it off on that.
Thou walkest in the peril of thy overthrow. Let's find that real quick. All right. Oh, so that's in Sirach. Okay, excuse me, that's in Sirach. So this is Sirach chapter 13, verse 13. And it says, observe and take good heed, for thou walkest in the peril of thy overthrowing when thou hearest these things awake in thy sleep. And this is very sound advice that we received from our ancestor here because this letter was found, this book was found during the Greek captivity. You know, so when this was written, we was getting jacked up by those Edomites in the Greek captivity. So when that letter was read, good heed was taken out of it because at that moment we was in captivity in the peril of our overthrowing. All right. And we're getting ready to enter into a time that's unlike any other. When you read about it in Daniel, the 12th chapter, when you read about it in Jeremiah 30, when it goes into Jacob's trouble, which is the spirit that the apostle Hart deemed this year. All right. Um, ah, shit. I, <laughs> the year, I believe what the, not a year of hastening, you know, pretty much. The hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. It's still fresh in my mind, you know, but the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, and especially knowing that we're in the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, yo, be mindful of how you move. All right. As it's written, as it's read, as it was just read, observe and take good heed for thou walkest in the peril of thy overthrowing. And knowing this, we got to be mindful of how we move and what we say to these people and what these people see of us in our daily lives. All right. It says when the Salakim, when thou hearest these things, awake in thy sleep. All right. And that just means to be alert. That means to have your antennas up and be double circumspect or more circumspect than you were before. All right. Because these people are out here and a lot of them are out here to set us up. OK, you see how that woman was very eager and willing to spill the beans of her dude. And he had nothing to do with that situation. All right. So I'm going to end it off on that. Hopefully this was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.